Okay, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. I'm Wei T. Lightheart from the Prosperity and Health Alliance. I'm joined this evening with Mr. Creel Hutchinson, and we are here to help you make 2018 your best year ever. And in order to do that, you need to ask yourself better questions. Tony Robbins says that success in any endeavor comes down to asking yourself better questions and then following up with action. Never leave the point of decision without taking some form of action. That is followed up by all out massive action. Massive action leads to momentum and momentum leads to unstoppable success. The more action you take, the faster you build momentum and the quicker you experience results. The one thing I would like to say about the Enagic business is it is a momentum business. It takes a while to build momentum, but once you have it, it does become unstoppable. And I have experienced that and so has Creel. We've also experienced moments when we stop taking the actions that you need to take and you lose momentum. And the thing is, is you'll lose momentum at about twice the speed uh, it takes to build it or twice the amount of time. So um, if you're looking to have 2018, your best year, there's always clues with what happened in 2017, like what you did, what, you, what happened, what didn't happen, and where you're going so that you can figure out what you need to do next in order to be successful this year. This year. So the first question I'm going to ask is, why are you doing this? Um, one of the things in the PH Alliance that we talk about is uh, Simon Simix, and it's the great companies always ask them why. And, you know, the why for everybody on here is going to be different, but it's important for you to be clear and definitive what your why is, and that why needs to be believable by you. For example, um, when I started this business, and Creel, you can jump in here and share what your why was. When I started in this, number one, I loved helping people. Number two, I'd gone through a major uh, change. Uh, I, had a, I went through a breakup. I had a complete financial meltdown. Um, and, you know, I lost vir virtually everything that happened to me. And, I, you know, I had, I had a high level of success. And my why at first was, number one, I need to get back to the financial level that I have been enjoying for the last three or four years. And number two, I wanted to do something in a way that was helping people. And number three, um, I love to present uh, topics and related to health. And so this fit those three things for my why. Now, my why has evolved over the years, but those, that was important to me. Uh, Creel, do you want to comment on what your why was? What your why was? Or is? Yeah, when I got involved, it was really clear. I, I have a passion for helping people. I, I'd been in other businesses that were focused on health and wellness. So that was a really clear, good fit for me. And two was um, I hadn't experienced the type of financial um, success I wanted to. And I saw the opportunity looking at Wade, looking at um, some of the other people in our upline. And I felt if they could do it, I could do it. And so, and I really had no other options because I was leaving a business that wasn't working and I needed this to work. So my why was really clear. It was, it was you know, float or sink, uh, live or die. And um, with a couple of rejections off the, off the bat, and it took me a couple months to sell my first system, um, maybe for somebody that you know, had other options, they might have left it a little bit early, but I didn't have other options. So it was really clear for me. I chose Enagic to be my vehicle, and I was going to make it work. So for everyone listening, so for everyone listening I would like for you would to like write down what your why is. Um, take a moment, write it down. And, and if you can't write it down really quickly, be, be really clear. Maybe it's about your kids. Maybe it's about retiring your spouse. Maybe it's about having money to income. Maybe it's about travel. Maybe it's that you want the status of, you know, walking across the stage as a 6A or 6A2 or 6A23. Maybe you want the recurring income, the security. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's real for you. And it doesn't have to be the reason that I do it or the reason that Creel does it. It's the reason that you're going to do it. And just be honest with yourself. That's the most important thing. And if you're honest with yourself, you can, you can tap into a, a, a bigger part of yourself. The next thing I think a lot of people 
Um, don't do one of the keys about being successful in your business is who's your market and write this down. Who is your market? Is your market your friends? Are you going to go after your friends or are those, are, are those the people that you think are going to be capable of building a business? How about um, your coworkers? Maybe there's people that you think are, you know, you're kind of hanging out of the water cooler. You're saying, yeah, we need to find a better way. We don't like it here. Like, are, are those the people or people in your industry, people that you, you find in, in your field? Um, is it people in social media? Uh, people that you're friends with and connected with on social media. Social media can become a great way of building a business, you know, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, that sort of thing, or Instagram. Um, or is it none of those things and you're going to go after trade shows or you're going to find some other methodology? And, you know, you might try some of these and with, with, you know, I've tried all of them, frankly, and you find different ones that are successful or some of them might be successful at different times. But the more important thing is, is um, determine what it is that you want to try and and then once you find something that you're successful at, so if you're good at social media attracting people, then double down on that. If you're good at doing trade shows and meeting people that way and following up, then double down on it. Um, I think a lot of people will look to other people and try to become successful the way they are successful, but it's really about finding the market that you can be successful in. Any, um, any things that you wanna share in regards to uh, marketing, Krill? Marketing, Krill? Yeah, Wade. Uh, I got really clear. Here is my market. I'm looking for people between the ages of 30 and 50 who are interested in health already and who have a really clear desire to be an entrepreneur and work for themselves. So um, I may work with somebody who I'm needing to educate them about the benefits of being in a home-based business, but most likely I wouldn't spend too much time there because I'm really looking for the people that already get that and are looking for something in that. So that's my, you know, that's my bucket from 30 to 50 years old, I'm interested in health and have already decided that, um, you know, they're a clear entrepreneur and looking for a business opportunity. Excellent. So that's a great definition of how to establish your market. Key number three, and that is, how are you gonna reach these people? So basically what's your marketing strategy? You know, some people's marketing strategy, you know, if I look at guys like Eli Defesh is everybody within three feet, anybody that comes within three feet of him, he, he just reaches out, introduces them and, and he's, he's a great social guy and does that. Um, I look at some people that are using lead generation off social media. Uh, for me, I looked at people who were interested in help and I started with my warm market of people who are already clients of mine. Um, the bottom line is, um, you need to understand like what is the way that feels comfortable for you? And then when you, when you look at what feels comfortable for you, you want to, mon you want to mentor or, or uh, mimic the people who are producing results in that area. So for example, Danny DiMacaulay does a call every Monday night and one of his big strategies is giving away water. And he does a lot of giving away water and, and that works for a lot of people. If you look at, um, some other people, they, they like doing demonstrations or they start doing uh, YouTube stuff or they start doing Facebook stuff or some people like to go to networking events. The bottom line is, is developing a marketing strategy is like, how are you going to go get new leads? Because the source of your business, that what determines everything is how many people you have putting in front of the demonstration, in front of your product, in front of your opportunity, getting to test it, try it, experience it, and see the opportunity or see the health benefits or whatever it is that your market's going to be. Those are the key things. That's called lead generation, marketing and lead generation. And are you going to follow up by text, email, phone? What is your system? And are you going to do presentations that are live one-on-one -on -one yourself? Are you going to take people to presentations or are you going to do things online? Um, Creel, do you want to share some insights that you have on what you use for marketing? On what you use for marketing? Yeah. Um, early, I kind of decided that uh, I know what I like. I like yoga. I like meditation. Um, and I like kind of hanging around with people. I was doing a lot of festivals at the time. So I had a warm market in, in different areas. And I just developed friendships with people and and. and opened up the conversation so that I could introduce Kangen water in, in a professional, easygoing way within those circles. And over time, I found people that were interested in the health and I found people who were interested in the business. So I continue to 
um, look for people inside projects that I'm naturally attracted to. So yoga, my yoga community, I go to yoga classes, I hang out at yoga events connected there. When I was going to festivals more, I was meeting people and talking about health there. Uh, I have a wonderful meditation group, um, sold lots of systems in there because I'm promoting who I am, getting to know people. So see what you're already naturally drawn to, towards, whatever your social environment is, whatever your extracurricular activities are. Um, you want to find people within those groups that you can develop friendships with and introduce Kangen to. So really, I built my business uh, person to person, uh, one demo at a time, one email at a time. Um, and I found great success and I found leaders and I really supported those leaders to what's comfortable for them and to, to do the same thing. Um, so that was generally my approach and continues to be my approach. I promote a little bit more of my lifestyle, the different things that I'm into. You guys may have seen, you know, I'm in Mexico right now. So people pop up saying, Hey, I'd like to learn more about your Mexico project. Great. I develop a friendship around that point of interest. And if we continue to get along more, then I'll start to introduce other things that I'm interested in and ask them what are the things that they're interested in. So um, I have different projects and interests in my life. I form relationships around them, them and then I uh, find a way to introduce Kangen into that in a natural way. Great stuff. Great stuff. Um, the next thing is and this is this is where people i think fall apart um and that is what is your daily method of operation for example if you've been working as an employee or on the self-employed side of the scale if you go over to the kioskaki quadrant generally you're expected to show up at work at a certain time and you go home at a certain time or if you have a business you know you got to open the doors at a certain time you got to close the doors at a certain there's a there's a and, and inside of that there's a variety of different things um but I find in this industry, because it's a lot of it, it's on you. It's your onus. It's, it's up to you. No one's going to tell you what you need to do. No one's going to set your calendar. No one is going to make you get up at a certain time or go to bed at a certain time or show up at a certain event or anything like that, that, that side of things. And a lot of people, frankly, have been conditioned to only function when there's some sort of pressure on them from an outside authority. And that's not to be negative, but it, or to slight anybody, but that's just the reality of the social conditioning that we've grown up with going to school, going to secondary education or going to a job that somebody else set the rules. Somebody else set the curriculum. Somebody else set the time frame. And the reality is a lot of people fail in these type of businesses because they don't have a daily method of operation. They don't set aside a scheduled must do daily schedule each week of where they're working. And the next thing is they don't set specific measurable targets as to how many people they're going to speak to in order to achieve the results they want to do. And then the, and the final piece is they don't re recognize or don't establish is how many touches that they are going to follow up in on the people that they're speaking to. So it comes down to how many hours are you going to dedicate to your business and how are you going to keep yourself accountable to it? Number two, What's your target number? What is the target number that you need in financial return? And how many people are you going to approach on a weekly basis and a monthly basis? And how are you going to count that? And how are you going to stay accountable to that? And then finally, how many touches on the follow-up? What is the follow-up? Because as they say, the fortune is in the follow-up. Krill, any uh, commentary on that? Any yeah, commentary on that? Yeah, this took me a number of years to figure out, Wade, when I first got into network marketing and being an entrepreneur, it was, I didn't have a schedule and I realized that I just wasn't getting the results. So I had to be diligent and really write it down on paper, commit the hours and do it. And over the years, I've just gotten better and better at that. So I work in a home office and I show up in my home office at 9 a.m. five days a week when I'm back home and I'm solid getting to business. And so I think people really need to set the time aside, like you suggested. Within that, you have to understand what the flow of your business is. You gotta be reaching out to people and how many touches on the follow-up. I think it takes anywhere from five to 15 to get people properly educated, informed, and enrolled. Most people will stop after three or four if it doesn't go their way. And when I got enrolled in this business, it was up to a dozen to 15 before I bought a system. So uh, realize you have to stick with the process longer than you think. And that's usually in the neighborhood of a month. 
um, to get all those touches in. So um, when you're building, you got to realize that uh, it's not going to be in 30 days, you're going to make a bunch of sales, you're going to take a bunch of activity in the first 30 days, but it's more likely in, in the 30 to 90 days is when that productivity and activity is going to really show up in your sales volume. So being committed to that long term process. And you bring up a good point. One of the things that I implement inside our businesses, and um, this is something that I think for all you folks that have made New Year's revolution, resolutions and sort of things is to look in your business like big corporations do, and they set things in terms of 90-day goals. Um, it's really hard to stay focused for 12, year, for, for 12 months the whole year. There's a lot of things that are going to happen that you're not going to plan for. And there's going to be a lot of course adjustments in your operations and you can actually track your results. If you break down, let's say you set your big hairy goal uh, for the, for the year, but let's work backwards from that. So let's say you have a goal of making um, $10,000 a month. You want to make a six figure income every year or by the end of the year. Well, to recognize that you're not going to probably do that in the first month, but is that possible in a year? Yeah, it is possible in a year. So how do you get there? Well, you work backwards from that. Um, in 90 day increments until you get to the next 90 days. So the next 90 days, going back to the Tony Robbins quote, you need to speak to, a, you need to take massive action. You need to talk to as many people as possible and you need to follow up with as many of those people as you can and see, you know, how many people you can speak to, how many people you're going to close and that will set your targets for the next month. And especially as your income starts to go up or the, your rent goes up, you get more and more money for the same amount of effort which is really nice. And then you start getting other people on the team and it starts to grow. So oftentimes your best month won't happen until, you know, month 10, 11 and 12 of the year, but it's going to be determined by what you do in the first 90 days of this year. So, you know, if I look at Siha Top, who's one of the most successful distributors in all of Enagic, he has an all out massive action that he starts in January and he doesn't let up for 90 days. And in fact, he oftentimes repeats it for two, two, two 90 day sessions. And that has allowed him to become one of the biggest distributors and have one of the best organizations. And now he spends a lot of time having a lot of fun, but every year he goes back to the well to do that 90 day kickoff. And that's something I really feel that uh, everybody here can benefit. And you can check out Eric Warre's 90 days, all out massive action, how to do uh, sponsor 30 people in 30 days. And if you're really motivated, you can go to the Insanity program, uh, which is a which is you know for people who are just they, they've got to do this no matter what. Let's move on to key number five, um, and this is a really important thing: is when are you going to do this? Like, I, I I know that this is a really powerful question, not just for yourself but also for members on your team or people who are joining your team, and that is when when are you going to do this? Like, have you been kicking around the Enagic business for a while and not getting it done? Um, are you just getting started? Or, or have you, you know, you, you know you've, been, you've been in a job that you don't like for many years or you've been doing something that you know that you're meant to do something else and you've chosen the Enagic business as your vehicle, but you haven't really leaned into it. So my question is for you to ask yourself honestly and to talk to your spouse or your, your, the people that are close to you in your, in your life and say, and ask this question, when are you going to do this? When are you going to set aside the time? When are you going to put, put in the work? When are you going to take what you need to do to do this? Because the reality is, is time is running out. I mean, how much time do you really have left? Honestly, how much time do you really have left to do this? Like if you want to get financially free, you want to have that residual based income happening in your life. Is do you want to enjoy your life? Do you want to get that when you're 80 or do you want to get it when you're 50 or do you want to get it when you're 30? If that's an option for you, like how much time do you have? You, have, you talk to any, go, go talk to people that are 70 years old. My parents just celebrated their 50th anniversary the other day. And, you know, I asked them, what, in, in, uh, how, you know, what, 50 years, it's incredible. Like, and they're like, yeah, I can't believe how fast it went by. 50 years of marriage, right? Can't believe how fast it went by. Um, recognize this. When you ask yourself this question, when are you going to do this? And you say, I'm going to do this now. This is my gear. Well, that's cool. And, and I'm being a little hard here, but I'm doing this because I really want you to understand this. 
in order for you to do this, it's going to require a shift in priorities. It just does. Because if you do what you did last year, your year is going to look like last year. If last year was great, awesome. Keep doing it and you're happy with that, go for it. If last year wasn't awesome, if last year wasn't your best year ever, if last year didn't leave you where you wanted to do, don't think that you're going to repeat that and get something different. So it requires a shift in priorities. And, you know, the bottom line is if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. And the next question, the follow-up to that is, what are you willing to give up? Are you willing to give up some TV? Are you willing to give up some time with some friends that you've been hanging out with? Are you willing to work late at night? Are you willing to invest in some mentorship or in some coaching? You know, are you willing to, to, to level up your skills, invest in yourself to become better at things? What are you willing to give up? Will it part some money, some time, some energy, some, some, you know, what are you willing to give up? Because if you don't, uh, you, 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 you know, as they say that you're blowing smoke up your butt and we don't want to do that. Creel, you any comment, commentary on this? Yeah. I love what Eric worry has to say is, um, say yes, go tell the world and go figure it out. And I think it's about, you're not going to have all the answers. You're not going to have, it's not going to feel comfortable, but if you're going to make a decision, then uh, find some accountability within that, you know, tell some people you care about, tell your upline, ask them for help and support, and then figure out a way to uh, make it happen. Because this opportunity can work for everybody who's listening to this call. And um, it's just a matter of time, skills, and exposures, and that can all be learned and trained and, and done. So, you know, if you've got a great opportunity here, I'd say step into it. Make 2018 the year that you say yes and go make it happen. Love it. Love it. Which leads us to key number six to success, and that is avoiding distractions. Look, we live in a world of all out massive distractions. Uh, Silicon Valley is, you've got some of the greatest minds in the world uh, trying to figure out how they can interrupt your life and get your attention. Social media can build your business and it can waste the rest of your life. What is your management strategy around that? TV watching. Uh, how much time are you watching TV, honestly? And could that be used somewhere else? And people go, well, I chill out or that's how I relax. Okay, well, maybe you're doing that once, once a week or twice a week or something. If you're watching TV every night, um, what are you really doing? If you think about it, you're staring into a screen watching a program. And that program is not going to help you achieve your goals. It is a distraction from the things that you set earlier in this question. It is a, it's a distraction from your goals. It's a distraction from maybe pain you might be experiencing. It's a distraction that is keeping you limited. And that's why they call it programs. Now, the other thing is, is surfing YouTube and emails. We live in a world like you get caught in the YouTube. Turn off your notices. Don't get the notices that distract you. If you're working, work. Don't shut down all your social media. I highly recommend if you listen to Tim Ferriss. Um, he's got a great podcast about what he does in order to manage his uh, social media. He puts his phone on airplane mode, especially first part of the day. Doesn't get to anything else other than what he needs to do. He, he goes out and takes action first. Um, this is really important. The other thing is, is when you're off, off, like shut off all that stuff. If you're going to hang out with your friends and taking some time out, some relaxing time with your family or your significant other, you don't know, take the time off so that you're spending time there. And we're all guilty of this. I'm not here to say that I've got this perfect. Uh, but one of the things that I've committed to this year is, is getting even, you know, even, even more conscious of when I check out and do kind of the surf uh, where you just, you know, you kind of go into one of those like YouTube holes or something and all of a sudden like an hour and a half goes by and uh, you now know the mating rituals of the African fruit fly and the, the genetic codes of uh, an alien race that seeded the planet 5,000 years ago and, you know, the latest rumblings on Twitter about a Hollywood actor. Like, how does that even happen? We've well, all been there, right? Uh, so the other thing, that, the one thing that I've noticed in studying um, I just read the, the entire book, Tribe of Mentors. It's like 600 pages. I read it on the holidays. It was a really thing. And, and basically he interviews, Tim Ferriss interviews 130 of the top performers in the world. And all of them responded to this. And that is cultivating selective ignorance. 
the way to navigate today's world of massive distractions. It's about managing your priorities properly and getting honest with yourself and others about the actions you're taking and what they lead to. Um, there's a great interview that he did on that podcast um, with Terry Crews, you know, the guy from the Old Spice commercial who was like an NFL football player and he's a multi movie star and he's like doing all these things. He's country, like, this guy's doing everything. And he has a great way about how he handles relationships and how he handles people and how he is like bone crushing clear about how he's going to achieve his objectives and what is a distraction to that and the people and places and things that can come. It's a really well and elegant way of handling those things. Creel, um, any, any thoughts on how you avoid distractions? Yeah, as I found in the last few years, taking on bigger and bigger projects, I only have so many hours to put into work life. And so I want to make those hours as productive as possible. So uh, through trial and error, I kind of realized what I need to do to maximize my hours in the office. And I don't want to work 40 hours a week. I don't have time to work 40 hours a week on a business. Um, I've, I've got four major projects in my life. And one of them is, you know, developing a healthy long-term relationship with my fiance who requires time and energy. So um, cultivating selective ignorance. Um, I think that's been a big part of it. I've never read it that way or looked at it that way, but uh, really prioritizing where I'm going to put time, energy, and um, be honest with myself. When I show up to put hours into my business, I put hours into my business. And when I'm off, I'm doing something else. So, you know, holding myself accountable in that and, and just stay away from, you know, stuff that's going to drain your life force. And you're just not going to have enough to really perform and create the, the lifestyle and the dreams that I want and that you want. So, um, you know, take this one to heart. I think avoiding distractions is huge and staying away from people that are dream crushers um, because they're looking for distractions and you might be one of their distractions on their list that they can waste a bunch of time with. So, you know, once a, a conversation is going in the wrong direction for me, um, I'm really quick to like, end it and move forward or change the subject and so forth. So, yeah, but I've learned that over time and really respecting and, and being honest with myself. Excellent. Uh, excellent, excellent, points. Uh, excellent. Finally, key number seven, um, mentorship and coaching. I think there's two levels to this. Um, finding the right mentor or coach in the business. One of the things that I did early on that led me to success was that I found some people that I really resonated with. I liked their style. I liked the way they did the business. And I, I had them as mentors and I had them give me key advice of what I needed to do relative to the business. So I, I, this is one of the reasons why I think it's important to go to the online events that we have and also some of the online events that are out there with other organizations, uh, you know, with like Danny D. McCauley call, the Eli call, um, all the different resources that are out there from, from, from different leaders and how they approach the business and how they like to do the business. And I think that is a great way. Go to the events, find the person that you most admire, find out what they did. If you see you're someone that you say, Hey, I, I resonate with them. I like what they're doing. I, I see myself doing that. You want to, you know, introduce yourself, make time for that person, find a way to add value to them and, and, and then find out what they did. And, and what's really great about in the Enagic business is that so many people are so open to help you, uh, in this business and, and really guide you and, and share with you the insights. And that's why going to the events and going to the online stuff and listening to these things over and over till you get it drilled into your head. Cause sometimes it takes 10, 15, 20 times to really integrate something. And it usually gets integrated when the opposite happens. Like you're trying to do something and it doesn't go the way you want. And it, it's the 15th time that that's happened. And you listen to the person and, and it really anchors cause the, that pain anchors it. The next thing is, is you need to find the right mentor or coach in your life. And the difference between that means is, you know, the Enagic business or any business is only a part of your life. It's one dimension of your life. And, it, and you know, the idea is to build a business that enhances your lifestyle, not takes away from it. And having a mentor or coach that has altitude that can look at the whole picture, the whole you, and help you guide you in the various areas of your life that will actually contribute to making you better in your business, even though it might not be directly to it. It could be just taking more time off 
Um, you know, one of the areas that, that I've struggled in in certain areas you know, is, is that, and, and I've got a mentor and a coach to help me see when I'm redlining too much and to back off and to go in different directions and stuff like that. And, and that person is somebody that shouldn't be in a magic, that should be outside of it, that's, that's a legitimate uh, professional coach or mentor to help you in that. And then finally, in relation to that is you need to build an accountability reward system. And if you look at motivation strategy, study Tony Robbins or any of the people in NLP, or you look at the military, or you look at high performers, um, athletes, whatever, uh, number one, there's an accountability process, whether that's financial accounting, whether that's having a coach that holds you accountable to your objectives, whether you have a great way of doing that from some of them. And usually it's an external component that helps you stay accountable with some intrinsic um, motivation strategies. And, and those things are a reward system. So your reward system needs to be <laughs> one that creates pain or pleasure. The reality is, is most people are motivated by plain, uh, pain uh, more than they are motivated by pleasure. That's unfortunate. So I suggest setting up dualistic goals, uh, something that is very painful if you don't achieve your goals and something that is very pleasurable or a reward that you do. So for example, if I, we achieve such and such a rank or such and such a goal, we're going to take that trip to the Caribbean that we've always dreamed of. Or, you know, if we hit that income goal, you know what, we're going to trade in the old car and we're going to get the new car. And then that now becomes anchored into your success system. And it could be as small as, you know, if I reach five people today, you know, I'm, I'm going to give myself some sort of intrinsic reward, whatever that is. And when you start out, you're going to have to reward actions as opposed to outcomes. And then eventually you'll start moving into outcomes as you get your method of operation down and your, your stuff. And then you just know you need to turn it up or turn it down or whatever it is that you need to do once you have a, something working for you. At first, these should be action related. And then eventually they're, they're more outcome related as you get a success system down for yourself. And that's going to take time for everybody to kind of work out the ultimate system for you. And that's also ultimately going to evolve over time as your business grows and as your business expands. Any, um, any thoughts or comments on this one? Chris? Uh, comments on this one Chris? Yeah, Wade. Uh, great stuff, by the way. Um, for me, um, I listen to a lot of audio books um, on uh, personal and professional development and also sales uh, training. Um, for example, Grant Cardone or Straight Line Persuasion, um, Eric Worre stuff. Um, and I just absorb let, that stuff like a sponge for the first few years until it really um, became part of my method of operation on a, on a daily, daily way. So um, this can actually be, cost people nothing to really create a mentorship coaching support system around you with some of the top people in the business. And uh, I think building in the pain pleasure reward system uh, is very effective. I know for myself, I've got some goals set for 2018 and the pleasure side of them um, only gets achieved if I hit those goals. And those are some of the big whys that I got currently in my business um, of building a, a bigger life moving forward. So um, I hope everybody else can do the same of really seeing, you know, what you would like to have on the pleasure side in 2018 um, and what it's going to take to get there and set that as the goal and move towards it. Back to you, Wayne. Excellent. Excellent. So the last question I'm going to ask you, and then we're going to turn it over to you guys for some quick questions here. We got another 10 minutes or so. Um, are you committed to your success? And I'm going to ask you that again. Are you committed to your success? And what does commitment look like? Commitment for me is a must have, not a want, not a desire. It moves to a must. Um, it becomes when I, when I decided that I was going to be a 6A23, I decided that early on in the business that I was going to get there. And I didn't get there right away. Uh, you know, I remember when we first started, we, we thought it was one way. We did the compensation program. We went, and it didn't work out the way I wanted. I got to that goal. It wasn't the goal that I thought. They changed the compensation. I went to that one, the next level and they changed it again. And then I went to the last level and then finally I got to the point where I couldn't stop. And I hit that last, that last one. I tried two or three years in a row that I didn't quite hit it. And then I finally did. And I'm, it's great. But that took me a long time. It took years. 
It took a lot of failures. I made virtually every mistake that you could make in the book. But when you're committed to something, you just know that I'm going to get that outcome no matter what. And it doesn't matter if it takes me a year, if it takes me five years, if it takes me 10 years, I, I, it doesn't matter. I am going to do this. I am not going to stop. I am committed and nothing is going to take me away from this. That is commitment. And if you've never been committed, um, this is a great time. Think about commitment you might have to your kids. Um, you're, you know, it comes back to your why. It's really hard to be committed to something that's not in your why. So knowing your why will lead to you being committed. And then, of course, all of the other things in between are how you tweak and find out the operational system that works for you. Any comments on this before we turn it to the question and answer, Creel? Well, I think at the end of the day, this is what it's all going to be about. Um, the commitment level that uh, I put into my business will be directly related to the results that I get. And so um, at times when I'm unhappy with the results I'm getting, I have to look back at how committed am I to my business and to the success in it. So uh, a really great question to get honest with um, and continue to ask that throughout a year, um, you know, every 90 days to really um, check in and, and see where you are operating in your business. So um, for all so, those who are on board here, if you have, and we have a lot of people on the call tonight, that's really, really great to have you all in here on the webinar. If you would like to, um, if you'd like to have a comment or say something, please uh, do so now. Uh, you can just type into the chat box and uh, we'll, we'll stay on here if you have any quick questions. And if not, we'll keep moving on. So I want to thank you all for that and uh, appreciate each and every one of you coming on here. So if you can just type into the chat and then we can see what's on there. While we're waiting, um, all pan yeah, so you can chat with all panelists. Anybody can just go into your chat. If you have a question, now you can hit it up and uh, we're here listening to see those questions as they come up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to also end this webinar for, or excuse me, end the recording. And...